Welcome back. 834 right now. Uh, I, I'm certain as educated as this audience is, uh, you were paying attention to this story that kind of broke uh, earlier this week um, about a man down in Arizona who was who could potentially face jail time for holding a Bible study in his house. Uh, the city prosecutor there in Phoenix is the one that uh, did this crackdown, supposedly, and claims that claimed that it was a zoning violation that the man was holding a Bible study, and that was her excuse for shutting him down. I, I saw that. That's. I crazy. mean, now that is that, that just absolutely amazing. Uh, we've got a guest with us tonight, Carl Gallops. Is he's a minister? He's an author. He's a conservative talk show host. Uh, he's a, he's got a book called The Magic Man in the Sky that's available uh, right now, and we can talk more about that in a minute. But, uh, uh, Mr. Gallup, thanks for joining us tonight. Hey, Mark, it's a, it's my great pleasure to be with you. Well, I appreciate you joining us. Now, you, you've you looked into this situation down there a little more closely than I have at this uh, point. Uh, wh- what in the world is going on? I mean, yeah. th- this is going to – a judge is going to decide sometime in the next week if this man faces jail time? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's bizarre, I'm telling you. Yes, I have looked into it uh, deeply. As a matter of fact, I have an anecdotal story a little bit later on. I've actually lived – a little bit of what this guy is living and fought the state of Florida and won. So I can speak with uh, quite a bit of authority on this situation. Wow. You, you know, I've done uh, several interviews on this topic uh, uh, across the nation um, since this story has broken. And uh, the bottom line is, you know, I, I hear people saying, well, this is religious persecution, religious persecution. No, it's not. It's uh, Christian persecution is what it is. <laughs> it's, in other words, they're, they're, to my knowledge, from everything that I've been able to investigate, there there has been no... Uh, there has been no charges similar to this uh, with any other uh, religious group uh, anywhere in the city. That uh, you, you know, I can't. Can't you imagine that somewhere there are Muslims studying the Quran in their I homes? I suspect, and, and I mean, just for example, because I I, I was a reporter for twenty five years, a television reporter. I, I'm. I'm I almost find it hard to believe that a legitimate city prosecutor would would do this under the guise of some sort of zoning violation, because often those are enforced by administrators of some sort and not the city prosecutor. What brought this this gentleman to her attention? Well, you know, I don't really know uh, it, it, unless neighbors reported him or something. But but look, Mark, I want to read her. This is her comment from the Fox News report. This is her statement. Listen to what she says. Quote, it came down to zoning and proper permitting, said Vicki Hill, uh, the chief assistant for city prosecutor. Quote, any time you're holding a gathering of people continuously, as he does, we have concerns about people being able to exit the facility properly in case there's a fire. And, th- and listen to this, Mark. And, quote, that's really all this comes down to. Well, now, Mark, if that's true, if that's all this comes down to, this guy should win this case hands down. <laughs> right. <laughs> because, I mean, this is her quote. Because here's, here's the thing, and I know your listeners are extremely uh, educated, and, and they're bright, uh, and, and so let's just think this through. All right, so the guy's holding a Bible study. It starts off in his living room. He has 15, 16 people, and, he's, and, and, and police get search warrants, and they burst in, into his home when he's got 15 people in his living room studying the Bible. Now, that's according to the Fox News report. It escalates from there over, the, uh, over a couple of years as he uh, tries to battle this. He says, look, I'm just having a Bible study in my living room. Well, you know, Mark, just think about it, you and your audience. What's the difference between that and and having 15 people over to watch porn every Friday night or to have a fantasy football uh, club every Friday night? Which or, you know happens. Yeah, do Absolutely. I? I mean, that happens every day oh, sure. somewhere. Sure, sure. And so, so why is it, you know, that he's being singled out? Now, he's an ordained pastor. He owns Mike's Burgers or something like that. He owns a burger <laughs> joint. Right. He's a businessman. Uh, somebody... Somebody has zeroed in on this guy who's an anti-Christian, an atheist, or something like that. Uh, you know, apparently there's some, and I'm just generalizing, I'm guessing here, but apparently there's some leftist in the government. But listen, listen, here's the deal. When government figures out that it can use, now it's, it's doing it illegally, but when it figures out it can use zoning and safety codes to regulate um, uh, a, a church, for example, or a religious gathering, 
it 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 gathers steam it gathers uh it it gathers power and what happens is then the government uh, has a tool whereby it can shut down a religious study group or you know more exactly a a church let right. me tell you what happened to me guys i'm a pastor 25 year senior pastor in a church in florida large church large baptist church and some years back, the state of Florida passed something very similar to what this guy is dealing with in Arizona. It's called Life Health Safety Inspection. And the purpose was that they were going to go into public buildings, and they were going to inspect for fire extinguishers and safety exits, et cetera, et cetera. And churches were not exempt. Well, I had some of these inspectors show up at my church one day and said, we're coming into your church, and we're going to inspect your building to see if you have uh, fire extinguishers and safety exits. Well, now, this is a building that's been in use for years. It's a big church. Of course we, we have all of those things. And I told them, I said, wait a minute. Before you come in, let me ask you something. What happens if I don't let you in the, the door? Well, you have to. I said, no, I don't. We're not a, we're not a public building. We are a private uh, building. Now, it's open to the public, but we're not selling anything here. This is not a business. This is a church. We're protected by the First Amendment. We can meet in a tent if we want to, Mark. I mean, did, people meet in tents. Did they inspect the local mosque? Uh, no, well, of course not. <laughs> of course not. But look, here, here's what happened to me. So I said, what happens if I don't let you in? He said, well, we'll write you a ticket. I said, what happens if I don't pay the ticket? We'll put you in jail. I said, what happens if I won't go to jail? He said, we'll shut the church down. I said, bingo. That's what I'm telling you. Anytime the government can regulate a church in any fashion, Mark, it can then stomp all over its First Amendment rights. So anyway, but long story short, I took them to an appeals court, and we won hands down. And nowhere in the state of Florida can, can the government now uh, inspect and force a church to, uh, to have a certain number of fire extinguishers or safety exits because it is a private facility. Now back to this guy in Maricopa. He's meeting in his home. He's having a Bible study in his home. In his house. In his house. That, that's frightening. Yeah. And it, then what happens... After they tell him he can't meet in his living room, watch this, guys. Now, this is according to the Fox News article. He goes down and applies for a permit to build a, quote, game room type uh, um, outbuilding from his house. Now, it seats, it has, they've got 40 fold, folding chairs in it. That's all it'll hold. So it's about the size of a, of a normal bedroom, if you will, that he builds an outbuilding. He gets the permit. He gets it approved. He lives on 4.6 acres of land. Those same Bible study people, now they're not meeting in the living room. He has spent all of his money, got the proper permitting. Now they're going to meet in this little outbuilding on 4.6 acres. They're parking on his property. There's no noise ordinance violations, nothing they're violating. And they come and get him again, and they cite him again. And this is what they've arrested him for. Now they're saying, well, now you're running a church. He said, why do you say that? Well, because you've got a separate building. He said, but... What's the difference in me having this and a bunch of guys down the street building a little outbuilding on their property and having a theater and showing movies every Monday night and having 20, 30 people over, having parties? Yeah, but you can't have Bible studies. He said, oh, really? Why wow. is that? Well, because that violates codes. What codes? Safety codes. If you're going to have a church, you've got to have safety codes. Whatever code they can uh, dream of up course. next, it sounds like, doesn't of it? Of course. So as I said, as I started the show by saying, this is not religious persecution. This is distinctly Christian persecution. And according to the, the assistant prosecutor, the uh, chief prosecutor, her assistant, according to this statement in the lead of the article, if this, she says this is all it comes down to, quote, and that's really all this comes down to, if that's true, then he can win this case hands down if he'll get him a good attorney. But right now it looks like he's headed to jail under their laws, and it's an absolute travesty of justice. Well, we'll keep a close eye on that. Uh, Carl Gallops, I appreciate you joining us tonight, and I, I do want to give uh, you a chance to uh, mention your book here. It's called The Magic Man in the Sky. That's available on Amazon, right? Yeah, it's a number one bestseller on Amazon. It was rave-reviewed by the Washington Times just a few weeks ago. The title is The Magic Man in the Sky. The subtitle is Effectively Defending the Christian Faith. It's a sweeping defense of the Christian faith. It's become an international uh, uh, um, phenomena, and as I said, a number one bestseller. And uh, you can go to Amazon, just put my name in, Carl Gallops, G-A-L-L-U-P-S. The book will pop up, and or just go to carlgallops.com. You can buy it in any bookstore across the nation. All right. Pastor Carl, thanks for your time.
Thank you so much, Mark. Right. God bless you. You have a good night. Thank you very much. Yeah, it, th- this was all over uh, social mm-hmm. media earlier this week. There are a lot of people out The Washington there. Times calls it a must-read book, a muscular defense of the Christian faith an arsenal of powerful rebuttals against Christian bashers. Amazon Books calls it a number one bestseller. I call it blessed and used by the Lord. Considering the times in which we now live, you need this book. Available at Amazon.com and the WND Superstore.